As you look over your life, over your career, how many hours, how many days, years have you spent waiting to be chosen, to be approved of, for someone else to launch you? Today, I'm letting you know that you are sitting on your greatest resource, you. Isn't it time you choose you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be a great day. It is every single day is exactly, exactly that. You know, happiness, I believe, deep true, fulfilling, everlasting happiness is recognizing that being chosen was the lie that was perpetuated by other people who wanted to make money off of you or to keep you small. That the ultimate feminist flex, guys, the ultimate way that we can stand up in our power as women, capable, incredible business owners and leaders, incredible healthcare providers and healers, that the truth is your inherent worthiness and that you don't need anybody else's approval. You get to choose yourself and no one else's opinion is more validating or fulfilling. That is the sweet spot of happiness. When you can learn how to choose yourself over and over and over again. You know, it's no, it's no surprise that we've fallen into this pattern of constantly seeking other people's approval. I mean, it's been perpetuated in society and perpetuated in our education system as doctors, dentists, veterinarians, chiropractors, physical therapists, all of you incredible women out there who were drawn to the healing professions, taking care of other people, all of you were inherently worthy. And it's really incredibly empowering when you realize that you get to choose yourself. You do not have to wait for somebody else to choose you. I mean, look at all the times in society and in life that we've had to do that, right? That you thought that was the case. I mean, certainly for me, yeah, when we were applying to college, <laughs> that was the beginning of it. Choose me, choose me. I remember waiting you know, for the mailman to come at the time. I mean, does that still happen? I think, I think now it happens over internet. I'm about to find out with my daughter applying for college this year. But, you know, I remember running to the mailbox every day looking for that quote unquote big envelope of approval. It started there. And it's so interesting because when that letter finally came, the big one that says, congratulations, you've been chosen, you've been awarded this opportunity at this college, we reinforce that validation, that external validation of our worth by celebrating. And then our parents celebrate and our family celebrates and we reach out to friends and we reinforce that reward feedback loop. Someone else thought I was good enough and now I feel good about myself. And it's so interesting that we perpetuate that throughout our education, please, residency directors, approve of me and say that I'm good enough to come to your residency. And please, you know, business owner, approve of me as an associate and hire me as an associate. We're constantly waiting to be chosen. I mean, honestly, women out there, how many of you chose and proposed to your husbands? I know I didn't. I waited to be chosen. And I remember those years of misery and anguish when we just knew that we wanted to get married and he wouldn't ask and he wouldn't ask and he wouldn't ask. I mean, how many of you out there share the story? And we continue that need for approval when it comes to our patients. Please love my practice. Please come to me. I will take the best care of you. And we hang our worth and our validation 
on the approval of our patients, on the approval of the community, even in social media, we're putting our happiness in the hands of people's whim on whether or not to like our posts. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's constantly perpetuated in our society and in our culture, and we keep reinforcing it. Even I remember in practice, when I was practicing early on, after I'd recently opened up my practice in a new state, I wanted to be in study clubs. I mean, that was as a specialist how you found referral patterns and grew new referrals with other dentists by creating connections. And study clubs are such a great way to do that because in a study club, you can share your expertise. You're working on patients, theoretical patients together. You're sharing your cases. You're valuing the same things in terms of lifelong learning. So those connections are valuable and solid. But being welcomed into a study club, in my experience, was a whole nother thing. As a specialist, as a woman, I found it very difficult to be actually invited into a study club. Everything changed for me when I started realizing that actually I got to be my own approval. That actually it was even more rewarding when I chose me. Ah, when I didn't wait for someone else to say, Taryn, you're good enough. When I just took it upon myself to say, Taryn, you are good enough. And sometimes I wasn't even sure I believed it yet, but every single time I invested in myself, it was worth it. And I'm not just talking about financial investment. I'm talking about emotional investment in myself. Betting on me, choosing me. Whether it was starting my own study club, starting my own practice, not waiting for somebody else to hire me, but say, you know what, I'm going to do this myself. Whether it was starting my own podcast. And that one, by the way, I didn't even try to look for anyone's approval. I just knew what I wanted and I went straight for it. And I thought, you know what, if only me, myself, and I listen to this podcast, oh, and my mom, <laughs> Because I know my mom will always be there for me to listen to my podcasts. But if my mom, me, myself, and I are the only four people that show up to this podcast, so be it. I'm choosing me. And let me tell you the power of that. Once you can start flexing the muscle of choosing yourself, nothing, 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 nothing can stand in your way. I don't care what it is. I have have yet to write a book and that's a big, beautiful, exciting adventure in my future that has been brewing in me for years. But let me tell you, I know when I do, I'm going to self-publish because I want to invest in me and I want to choose me. The interesting thing about learning to choose you is that the moment you do energetically everything shifts. Let's just talk about this for a moment from a healthcare provider's perspective. Who are the doctors in your life that you've been to that you've loved and appreciated and been dedicated to more than anybody else? They were the ones, I'm going to venture to say, who knew their own worth. And we're not asking you for your, their approval. You for their approval of them. Excuse me. The people who were the best were the ones who didn't need your approval. They just inherently believed in themselves, and that's why you believed in them too. Think about friends of yours. Think about that one friend who is unapologetic about who she is. She wears the thing that no one else would wear. She drives the thing that no one else will drive. She says the thing. She has the audacity to say the thing that no one else will say. But you know who approves of her first is herself. And how much do you admire her for it? Energetically, we show up differently when we approve and choose ourselves. And that 
is a marketing strategy for dentists and doctors and veterinarians and physical therapists and chiropractors that is for free, my friends. There you go. I just gave it to you, which is untouchable. There is no marketing strategy. There is no LinkedIn group. There is no social media algorithm that is as powerful as you choosing you. And I love this idea of choosing you because a big part of self-confidence is belief, inner belief, right? But sometimes we're not even so sure. I'm not really sure I can pull this off. Let's use my book analogy. I haven't written a book. I don't have any evidence that I can write a book. It's a dream. If I say I am believing I'm the best author out there, eh, that's called faking it till you make it. And I don't believe in that, right? There's a part of me inside of me that just knows it isn't true, right? Am I not right? Haven't you heard that from people where they're like, just fake it till you make it? No, there's a part of you that inside of you is not in alignment with that. It doesn't feel truthful to you. And any time we lie to others, it feels unstable, but whoa, you are throwing yourself off completely when you lie to yourself. The instability and the fear and the nervous system activation that happens when you lie to yourself is undeniable. We all know that. So notice, I'm not telling you to have false confidence in yourself. I'm recommending choosing yourself. That's a very, very different animal. When we choose ourselves, we give ourselves permission to invest in ourselves, to believe in ourselves without knowing the outcome. Ah, imagine that. When you choose yourself, you're saying, Taryn, you are worthy of this and I have no idea where this is going to go, but I am choosing you. That's all we're asking for. That's all we're asking for of ourselves. And when we choose ourselves, suddenly that confidence starts to creep in because now I know I can do it. I have no idea how the rest of the world's going to perceive it, but I know I can do it. I believe in myself. Maybe that confidence isn't there yet, but this is how we build it. And energetically, that feels very different to other people. Not just to other people, but to the system itself. I know that every time I've chosen myself, it has been astronomical in its success. Because I'm not relying on somebody else. And the success isn't the whole thing. It's the happiness that follows. Because I'm not waiting for someone else to say yes to me. I'm saying yes to me. And there's a really inter interesting psychological feedback loop that happens. Because not only do I feel great when I choose myself, but my choice becomes valuable and important. Who I choose carries a lot of weight. Do you see how it reinforces itself? Not only am I choosing myself because I believe in me, but I'm choosing myself and that person being me, choosing me, really matters. It's interesting because it's the truth of being a great doctor or a dentist when you choose you. You don't need your patients to choose you. It's the truth of how to be a great speaker on stage when you choose you. And when there are no stages that are asking you to speak, you create your own stage because you're choosing you. That's how people perpetuate success. That's how you create your own future. That's how you predict the future. By choosing yourself. It's the truth in how we fall in love with other people. It's that friend who believes in herself. And it really comes down to 
getting to the place where you believe in yourself with such deep belief, without having to know the outcome, without having to know what it's going to look like after you've invested in yourself, but you believe in yourself so deeply that no one else's opinion matters. That's when you become untouchable. When your likes on social media just don't matter. Because the only thing that matters is how much you believe in you. And then we let go of ego. Then we get let go of ego. Right? We don't need the numbers to give us evidence of how good we are. We just believe in ourselves. That is the ultimate flex. See, it's a lie that we need someone else's approval. It's a lie that we need that in any arena, in partnership, in parenting, in business for sure, in caring for your patients. If you have gone through training and you love what you do and you care about your patient, you are the best practitioner for that patient. But knowing that and choosing yourself is the magic that is missing from so many people. I mean, this, if this is all you ever do, you will be enormously successful and people will flock to you. And that's not even going to matter to you after a while. It's not because you'll realize how valuable your own choices are. And then we start really evaluating who we're working with. There's nothing that will destabilize your team as quickly as when the leader is begging her team to approve and choose her. When as a leader, you're constantly trying to make sure that your team members will choose you. It's a whole different thing when you show up fully in compassion and love and support and genuinely wanting to create an incredible environment, a work environment where we all want to be every day. And you choose you as that great leader. What's the leader you want? What's the leader you want to follow? What does she look like? Choose her. Because chasing after other people's approval will never, never give you that stability and that confidence in yourself that other people need in order to follow. It's been such a great realization, especially in terms of inspiring others. You know, I sit here in front of you on this podcast, and I'm recording this on a Monday morning. And in order to be here in this space, there's nobody sitting around me right now. There is no audience. I'm not getting any feedback. I got to put out this podcast episode every week, and only because I'm asking myself to, because I'm choosing me. When you can strengthen that muscle of choosing yourself, you become unstoppable. Nothing stands in your way anymore. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Then you get to ask yourself, well, hell. (laughs) If this is all it took was me choosing me, what do I want to experience in this life? You realize I don't actually have to answer to anybody else. What do I choose to experience? Now the world becomes a playground, a playground of opportunities. And that really is what it is. For a moment, recognize if everything tomorrow were to collapse, how much freedom would you have to choose a new path? And does that excite you? It excites you when you believe in yourself and you can choose yourself. It's also the foundation of creating enormous wealth and abundance. It's the foundation of creating enormous time availability. It's so interesting. I think one of the things that most of us are constantly looking for is more time. But when you choose yourself, You actually choose how you want to spend your time. Now, look at how differently that looks when it comes to patient care. I remember when I opened my first practice, I was even considering Saturday hours. And I know many of you out there do that. 
And not because I wanted to work on a Saturday. I wanted to be home with my kids. I wanted to be running. I wanted to be taking a break. I wanted to be visiting family, going to CE courses. The only reason why I ever even considered working on a Saturday was because I thought that then other people would approve of me, would choose me as their orthodontist. And for those of you who do work Saturdays, you know <laughs> it's wholly unfulfilling because Saturdays are the easiest day to cancel your appointment, to not show up to your appointment, to forget you had an appointment. And when we're looking for that validation constantly, that becomes unstabilizing, unfulfilling. But when you choose yourself, no one can take that away from you. You get to choose whatever you want in this life. And investing in yourself, and I'm speaking now very specifically from an emotional investment standpoint, that is how you choose yourself. You choose yourself by investing in yourself, believing in yourself, trusting in yourself, and by the way, allowing yourself to fail. That's a part of it. We keep hearing this over and over and over again, that failure is an inevitability in success. It's actually imperative in success. And I'm talking about in love, in business, in healing patients, in parenting. Failure is imperative. There is no getting to a great outcome without making some mistakes along the way. So guess what? You might as well choose yourself because you're going to make mistakes and then you're going to learn how to be okay with those mistakes. Even celebrate them. Even celebrate them because if you've made a mistake, you've tried. And that's more than most people can say. Another big component in choosing yourself is in eliminating comparison. Stop comparing yourself to others. When you choose yourself, you're saying, I'm just stepping outside of the game. Here's the game that I thought I needed to play, that I kept asking to be a part of, and I'm just going to step out of it and create my own game. Because when you do that, you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else because you're playing your own game. And it's amazing. Another huge component of choosing you is getting very clear on what feels good and what it is you want. It's so interesting to me how many incredibly capable women I speak to on a daily, daily basis, high achieving men, women and men, by the way, who don't know what they want. They're only doing what they think other people expect of them. And, and then we get to this place of like, why am I not happy? And if you're realizing, oh, wait a minute, I'm in that boat, please know you're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. You've just been practicing what everyone else wants of you for so long that you haven't gotten in touch with what it is that you want. But ooh, what a beautiful, beautiful muscle to flex. When you start to pay attention to what you want and then saying yes to the call. And I'm not saying it's not scary. Sometimes we realize, oh, what I want is not so comfortable to face. What I want might mean dismantling some of what I've already built. Maybe in a relationship, maybe in my career path, maybe in my business. We all had that beautiful experience with Oprah Winfrey. Remember that years ago? And <laughs> I'm aging myself. All of us incredible women who were watching Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah Winfrey show. And then the day she decided to cancel the show and tear down everything she had spent decades creating to do something else that none of us were quite clear on what it was, but man, she knew. It's that clarity of what you want and what feels good to you. And guess what she did? She chose herself. She didn't ask for anybody else's approval. In fact, I would venture to say she got a lot of people's disapproval at that time. I would be surprised if she didn't. And yet, choosing yourself is the only way for long-term happiness and greater success. And it's what we're here to do. The permission 
to dream. When I wrote my first, um, I was a collaborator in a book. So yes, I have been a published author. <laughs> and I was a collaborator in a book. And it was the chapter I wrote was called The Three Permissions of Self-Empowerment. And I've done a couple of um, podcast episodes on it. And I welcome you to go back and listen to them. But the very first permission, and I still believe in this so deeply now years and years later, is the permission to dream. And it's not somebody else's permission that you're looking for. It's your own. And the moment we give ourselves that permission to dream, we are choosing ourselves. So even before you take action on your dreams, by giving yourself permission to dream, by giving yourself permission to sit back, take a moment and say, what do I want in this life? What do I want to experience? By giving yourself that moment of reflection and quiet to hear the answer from your inner wisdom, to hear the answer from your higher self, that is the moment you are choosing you. Boom. If you do nothing else but start from that one little place, that's how we start flexing that muscle. That's how we start flexing the I choose me muscle is by choosing to give ourselves permission to dream. And when I say dream, I mean beyond what is your lived experience, beyond your reality of now. Yes, but Taryn, right now I have these loans, I have these debts, I have these kids, I have this marriage, I have this job, I live in this part. Ah, beyond that, what do you dream of experiencing in your life? The greatest, greatest women leaders the greatest women artists, the greatest inspirations that we look up to in women and those identifying as being women are the ones who gave themselves permission to dream something beyond what the world was evidencing for them in that moment. That is choosing you. And right now, if you're listening to this episode and you've listened now through all 26 minutes of it, I know I'm sparking something inside of you. Imagine a future where your choices did not matter one iota on anybody else's opinion, but you got to choose you every time, no matter the outcome. What would be possible for you? What would you dream for your life and your career and your relationships? Give yourself this week, permission to dream. Give yourself permission to start choosing you. And remember, when you feel good, that is when you really can do good. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thank you for listening to this episode of the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm jumping on here to let you know about an amazing opportunity at the end of this month, September 2023. I'm bringing to you a free workshop for all of you incredible women out there who are listening to this episode, who are in the healthcare professions. I don't care if you're a veterinarian, a chiropractor, a dentist, a doctor, a hygienist, whoever you are, if you know that you are meant for more then you are not going to want to miss this absolutely free workshop. I'm just bringing it to you because it is in my heart to allow each and every one of you to have the tools to reach for your dreams. Listening to these last few episodes, if anything has touched your soul and reminded you of who you are and lit that spark in you of knowing there is something in you that is not willing to keep quiet, but something that maybe you've been pushing down for years, maybe decades, knowing that you are meant for more. And I don't mean more material things. Guys, I have enough stuff, don't we all? But I don't mean dreaming smaller. I mean dreaming big. If you know that there is an impact that you need to have on this world, that there is a place for you that you are not answering the calling to, 
then this workshop is for you because I'm going to help you identify exactly what that is, the clarity of what that is, and then know how to take the next best steps to reach for your dreams. Because there is nothing, nothing that makes you feel more alive than when you're answering the call to your desire. And there is nothing that's more impactful on your community, on this world, that when you say yes to yourself and you answer that calling, that you can actually help, heal, support, inspire millions and millions of people. And that's what this workshop is all about. Keep your eyes open for the Meant for More workshop. And if you want to be sure that you get the first information about it, In the show notes, I want you to click the link to join my newsletter and I'll make sure that you get it. Guys, it's going to happen any day now. So be sure to be on my email list so that you can be the first person to know about Meant for More and register for this absolutely free event. I'm so excited to see you there.